Paul in Greenville, South Carolina, listening on Sirius XM. Hey, Paul, what's up? Uh, I have a question for you. I hear you talking about Citizens United and all this super PAC money. What's any difference than Bill Maher giving a million dollars to Obama and Oprah Winfrey giving $10 million to Obama and, and all these Hollywood people giving millions of dollars? He had a fundraiser in, in Hollywood, and he, he got like $8 million from that fundraiser. Right. Why is that any different? than these super PACs. It's the same exact thing. Why There's is it any different than Shelley Adelson, for example, uh, giving $100 million to, def- to defeat Obama, for example? So what? Okay. So well, what? here, let I me, mean, let me, l- let me just ask you a question. And, and I mean this seriously, Paul. Shelley Adelson knows. In fact, he said it at a meeting. It was recorded. He said it at a meeting that the Koch brothers held, that if he makes that $100 million investment... He's going to make back, if, if Mitt Romney is elected, and if Mitt Romney drops the capital t- gains tax to zero and does away with the inheritance tax and reduces the top income tax rate from 36% to 25%, all things Romney's promised to do, Shelley Adelson knows that that $100 million investment will produce for him a $2 billion return. Okay, so it's a return on investment. And Adelson was right up front about it. He said, when I am putting money into these politicians, I'm making an investment. Now, please tell me, what Bill Maher is going to get for the million dollars that he gave Obama? You have to ask Bill Maher that. He's getting kicked back somewhere. I mean, people just don't give a million dollars away without making money somewhere. Well, maybe in your world. Do in that. my world, Paul, people... I, I, I was born a Democrat. My whole family was Democratic. Everybody in my family was a Democrat. We have all... I'm the last one to switch, and I have just recently switched to a Republican. Because Paul, Paul, I'm, let me let me let me, let me just finish old, this sentence. Uh, you know, wh- whatever old, whatever you're. Every time there's been a Democrat in office, I have lost. Paul, what my is has gone down? Well, well, the fact of the matter is, actually, if you look o- ever since Dwight Eisenhower's presidency, ever since the end of World War II, that when Democrats are in office, the stock market goes up more than it does when than when Republicans are in office, and employment, the total number of people employed, and the total number of money dollars that they're making goes up more than when Republicans are in office. And that is an absolute fact. I defy you to prove otherwise. It is, it is an absolute statement of fact. But again, the question, we know that the billionaires and the big corporations who are putting hundreds of millions to billions of dollars into the Romney campaign, the Ryan campaign, and Republican campaigns against the country, around the country, that what they're going to get back is a reduction. They're going to literally get back more money than they put and in. Oprah, and Oprah Winfrey Bill, ain't, ain't a... Uh, Bill Maher it, it, and Oprah... Let me finish a sentence here. Bill Maher, Oprah Winfrey, Barbara Streisand, Oprah. me, uh, you know, I don't put in a million dollars, but I put in a hundred bucks. Uh, you know, what those of us who contribute to progressive causes, what we expect to get back is a world where they... The, let, let me finish my sentence here, Paul. Paul, let, let me... I'm just going to put you on hold here for a minute, Paul, so I can finish a sentence. What I expect to get back from my $100 donation, and what I'm, expe- what I'm guessing Bill Maher is going to get back from his million-dollar donation, is a world where if he's standing at a bus stop, the guy next to him who's coughing doesn't have tuberculosis because we all have health care. Where if, if, if his, his child or his niece or nephew or one of my kids or, or you know, God willing, someday I should have grandchildren, uh, decides that they want to start a business and they slip and fall and they have to declare bankruptcy, that it's not the end of their lives. They can do like Henry Ford did and declare bankruptcy seven times if necessary. That, that if, if, if tragedy befalls them, if like my, my friend Michael Hutchison, who is out running in, in Santa Fe, a, a decade ago and tripped and fell and broke his neck in his late 30s and ended up paralyzed from the neck down. If that happens to them or anybody I know or anybody in my society, that there will be Social Security there that isn't run by Wall Street that will pay for them and that will cover them. In other words, that we live in a society that is a decent, healthy, happy society. Paul, that's what I believe Bill Maher and Oprah Winfrey, and what I can tell you I am investing in when I invest in Democrats, Who's not that my it? taxes are going to get dropped. Who's going to pay for it? We are, we are paying for it right now. Who's, who's going to pay for it? Social Security is paying for my friend Michael Hutchison. One-third of all Social Security payments go to people who are injured but and who's disabled. Who's going to pay for Obamacare? Who's going to pay for that? Obamacare actually reduces the amount of money that we're all spending on health care, Paul. How do you figure? We've gone five I'm looking, trillion dollars I'm, more in debt in three and a half years. That has nothing to do with Obamacare. 
How do you buy your way out of debt? It's impossible. You Paul, you ever heard of Dwight Eisenhower? You ever heard of Dwight Eisenhower? He's an idiot. I personally thought Dwight Eisenhower. Dwight, I don't like the man. Paul, Dwight Eisenhower was an idiot. When Dwight Eisenhower I, came I into like office, when Dwight Eisenhower came into office, it was after World War II, our debt to GDP ratio was 127 to 1. We were at 127% of GDP, our debt was. That's before my time. You're right. It was before my time, too. Actually, when Dwight Eisenhower came into office, I was one year old. That it was 1952. It doesn't concern me. Okay. I wasn't born. It was real, though. And do you know how Dwight Eisenhower, the Republican president, two-term Republican president, Richard Nixon was his vice president, you know how he got that debt paid from 127% of debt, which is right now we're not even 100%. We're just close to it. How he got that from 127% of debt down to, what, 20% of debt, 15% of debt? You know how he did that? Start the welfare system? No. He built highways. He built roads. He built schools. The federal government spent 70% of the cost of every school built in the United States in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. The federal government spent 65% of the cost of every hospital built in the United States in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Dwight Eisenhower initiated that process. That created so much growth. All that great education, all, you know, great health care system, a, an interstate highway system so that commerce could happen, created so much growth that so many people started making so much money that they paid so much taxes that it paid off our national debt. That's how it happened, and that's what we need to be doing right now.